Hello folks, it's me, Demontropolis. As you can see, I'm suffering from the effects of the Game Boy curse, because I'm taking a look at Mega Man Dr. Wily's Revenge, the first of five Game Boy titles for the series, released in 1991. This was the first Mega Man game that got outsourced by Capcom to a different developer, known as Minakuchi Engineering. They were chosen because they were big Mega Man fans, and Capcom believed they understood the games better than some of their own people. However, the handheld games of Mega Man are typically known for being inferior to their console counterparts, as they recycle content from those games. But will that really deter from my enjoyment of these titles? Or is it something else that's in play that will define the experience? Join me as I go through Mega Man's first outing on the Game Boy, Dr. Wily's Revenge. Without even getting into the game yet, the fact that this is a Game Boy game is already a pro, as it was the first portable experience for Mega Man fans back in the day, which was great, as you now had a Mega Man game to play outside of the house. Like I said before, the Game Boy games are known for recycling content from their console counterparts, and Dr. Wily's Revenge is no different, pulling from Mega Man 1 and 2. Almost every enemy in this game comes from either of those titles, the only exception being these cutting wheels that have a distinct revving up sound when they appear. Most bosses are also from these games, and that there are four robot masters from each, which will be the continuing trend moving forward. The game structure is straight up whack and incredibly flimsy. Your stage selector gives you four robot masters to choose from, all of which are from Mega Man 1. I'm not a big fan of having only four stages to choose at first, since it's much shorter and doesn't allow for a diverse weakness chain. But it is the Game Boy we're talking about. After that, you got the Wily Castle and the Wily Station, each having one stage, but they're much longer by comparison. So that's only six stages in the game, a length that's even shorter than Mega Man 1. Now you might be asking, what about the Mega Man 2 Robot Masters? Do they have stages? No! They are fought in rematch capsules at the end of the Wily Castle, meaning they don't get stages, and you're expected to fight them in a setting designed around you knowing how to fight these guys already. Yet this game doesn't actually have rematches! I mean, Bubble Man's Arena is the only part of the game that has water! And it's not even noticeable at first until you realize, oh hey, I can jump higher now for some reason. What were they thinking? If you try comparing physics of the Game Boy games to the NES games, there are some differences here and there, but it'll be pretty easy to pick up when you transition. Just don't have Iceman be your first Game Boy stage. You have your control scheme from Mega Man 2 in that you can walk, jump, and shoot. It's playable, at the very least. What I first take issue with is that you have momentum in the air, sliding forward a bit when you stop moving. Whereas in the NES games, you don't have any momentum and stop in place as soon as you let go of a direction, not the case here. Although you can still zigzag, thank goodness, it takes half a second to fully lose your momentum, which can feel weird when trying to hold your ground on small platforms. And guess what? Ice physics only exemplify this trait, by making you even more slippery in the air. The worst aspect is the final room where you have to kill these squirms that are in your way, but they have these small hitboxes and a good chunk of health. So when you're trying to position yourself on these icy blocks, which are two tiles long by the way, you're wrestling with the momentum just to stay put. This is why I said earlier that you shouldn't do Iceman first, because the momentum shock compounded with ice physics is really going to sour your first impression of this game. What also sucks is that you're not allowed to mash the shoot button as much as you want. The game deliberately eats hasty inputs, and this can really drag out fights with tougher enemies like the Sniper Joes or the Hotheads, so the most optimal way to do damage with your buster is to shoot at a steady, consistent pace, and that's boring. To make it worse, enemies have iframes, yay! So even if you do get your buster shots to come out as quickly as you like, the game just won't register those following hits, and because of these limitations, it makes playing the game buster only a slog. 
Going to the level design, I appreciate how the levels aren't just one-to-one -one with the NES layouts. There's new flavor and gimmicks to spice things up, like the falling icicles in Ice Man stage, or the stationary fans that blow you away. While some of the enemies carried over have slight reworks in how to beat them. Like the big guys can only be hurt when they are in the air, but they have less HP to compensate. The supercutters don't fly out of a machine, and instead loop around in a circle when you approach. The tackle fires are dropped out of holes in the ceiling, and the electrical beams can also aim upwards. An unfortunate side effect of the game having all these unique gimmicks is that they don't get utilized to a greater potential, and only show up once or twice in the whole game. Fireman Stage has these floor burners that sweep a small flame across, and I kid you not, they only appear in these two rooms. The falling icicles are also only in two rooms. Same stage also has these ice cubes that melt as you stand on them, and they are only in this one room of the stage, but they do appear in the Wily stage as well. However, their only use is to block your path and force you to use carry to melt them. I like how the enemies that didn't change too much were scaled down to accommodate for the Game Boy screen crunch, like the screw bombers only shoot once and the pippies are much slower in their flight. Most enemies that shoot projectiles generally have a slower rate of fire, which I appreciate. As for the level design itself, yikes. There's unfair spike drops in several stages, especially the Wily Castle, where most of which are impossible to avoid depending on the route taken, and your only effort of surviving is with your new utility carry, which we'll talk about later. Many levels have extremely tight jumps, requiring you to tippy-toe to the very edge if you want any chance of making it. Most of them are also in the Robot Master stages, where you won't even have access to carry. Certain stages have high health enemy spam, like the Squirms and Iceman stage, the Cutting Wheels and Cutman stage, and the Hotheads and Fireman stage, the latter of which has entire hallways of just Hotheads. This means that the only feasible stage to do first with your Buster is the Lekman stage, but oh no bro, that stage and the Wily station have long Yoku block patterns over spikes, where punishment is either dropping you several screens or to your death. However, most of these are just artificial difficulty, so if you know what to expect, the game is actually kinda easy. Even with this unfriendly difficulty, the game has a low amount of 1-ups, just amounting to 5. To be fair, Mega Man 1 also had 5 1-ups, but they were well spread out across the game, and there was also a Yushichi to find. Not the case here. Of the 4 Robot Master stages, only Cutman's has a 1-up, and the rest are just dumped onto you in the two endgame stages, in really easy spots nonetheless. What baffles me even more is that this game has no E-Tanks to be found, yet this game has Mega Man 2 content and was released in 1991, the same year that Mega Man 4 would come out. I do like what this game does for certain songs. The Robot Master songs are not just the same composition, but are remixed to have new melodies, or at the very least change the central pitch. The boss theme also does this by mixing in elements from the boss themes of Mega Man 1 and 2. Not too big a fan of the newer compositions, though. They have this calm, relaxing vibe that doesn't really fit the intensity of a Mega Man game. Some of them are still catchy, like the Wily Castle theme, but stuff like the Wily Station theme is just way too happy and cheerful for a game called Dr. Wily's Revenge. The Robot Masters from Mega Man 1 are all simplified from their original fights, to the point where most of them are extremely easy to cheese, or just really easy on their own. Fireman's Firestorm does not generate a fireball underneath you, so it's basically just jump rope the fight. Iceman only shoots two Ice Slashers in one set, and they are more spread apart. As Alekman always jumps in your direction, you can pretty much keep him away from his attack point and get him stuck in a jumping loop. Cutman is the only exception to this curse, but in the sense that his jumps are shorter and walking under him is pixel perfect. These guys also die really quickly to their weakness. It's usually 3 to 5 hits, though Cutman is once again the exception in this regard, since he's now weak to Firestorm. The Robot Masters for Mega Man 2, on the other hand, are poorly interpreted here, in rather cheap ways. 
As mentioned before, Bubble Man's arena is the only place in the game with water physics, but his bubble lead rises and falls so quickly that it doesn't match the buoyancy. Bubble Man himself also constantly flickers for some reason. Quick Man only does two jumps before a run, though his jumps always rubber band to you and are the get in your face kind of jumps. Flash Man can use Time Stopper in the air when recovering from an attack. Plus, his hitbox becomes intangible during this move, meaning projectiles can pass right through him. Sucks, considering Atomic Fire is one of his weaknesses. Heat Man's Atomic Fire shots are always grouped together, but it's very hard to predict where they will land, and it's made trickier to dodge without sliding. Impossible if Heat Man's close to the center. He also always does the attack after recovering from a charge, though it is possible to hit him a second time before he protects himself. These guys' weaknesses are identical to what you'd expect coming from Mega Man 2, though Flashman has a new weakness to Ice Slasher. If there's one good Robot Master boss here, it's gotta be Enker. He's the first of the Mega Man killers, and a unique boss created specifically for this game. He provides a decent challenge, being that he only takes damage from the Mega Buster, and he uses that to his advantage. Enker's main gimmick is after he moves to the other side, he raises his weapon, the Barrier Spear, to absorb shots and power up his Mirror Buster projectile in speed, size, and strength. As he is mostly vulnerable when raising his spear, you have to get risky with how much damage you want to deal to him before he unleashes Mirror Buster. With Enker defeated, all you have left is the Wily Machine Eye, the only boss that isn't a Robomaster, and a fact that leaves a lot to be desired in terms of boss variety, as the fight itself is not too bad on its own. Fun fact, the Pico Pico Kun boss from Mega Man 2 was actually planned for this game, but got scrapped despite having sprites and everything. The weapons returning from previous games are mostly identical in terms of their use, but their power has been redistributed, mainly so the Mega Man 1 weapons aren't one-shotting everything. I can appreciate how weapons like Rolling Cutter and Bubble Lid became stronger in this game, because they were overshadowed by the other weapons in the titles they came from. Atomic Fire is also given the responsibility of breaking breakable walls. Also, this weapon gets screen gives Mega Man Robo Lips, so, uh. In the grand scheme of things, however, the weapon balance gets skewered because of these tweaks and the game's structure as a whole, in which the last five weapons only get use in the Wily Station. Rolling Cutter ends up being the strongest multi hit weapon because the enemy iframes last shorter when hit by that weapon which makes Thunder Beam and Firestorm inferior and straight up eclipses Quick Boomerang. You have no reason to use that last weapon when you already have Rolling Cutter. Bubble It is also in the same category as Rolling Cutter because each bubble does four damage, meaning three bubbles can kill every enemy in the game. Just two bubbles can kill a big eye. By comparison, Atomic Fire is unable to one-shot a big eye at full power because it does the same damage as a single bubble. It also releases the charge if you get hit while charging. However, Time Stopper got hit the worst, as the one stage it can be used in isn't even built for it because its main gimmick is Yoku Blocks. I've only found use for it in the room with two cutting wheels and the rooms with peepees because it has a new side effect of cancelling itself when you go through a transition. The utility of this game, Carry, is acquired after you beat the first four Robot Masters, so you have it on you during the last two stages. However, it's extremely clunky to use as it spawns a single platform under you and only one can be on screen at a time. It cannot be manually despawned, nor can you pause the game when Carrie is out, so you have to wait for it to stop spinning and then despawn, and during this time, it'll be draining ammo that you would rather be using on something else. It doesn't help that the level design expects you to have it on you when falling, as there's a lot of wide spike drops that you could fall onto and only Carrie can save you. Back to Wily Machine I. The second phase is only weak to the Mirror Buster, the new weapon you get from Enker. This weapon puts up a shield in front of you that reflects projectiles, which is quite strong as it can defeat Sniper Joes in just two shots. However, 
Wily Machine Eye does not take damage from anything else in the second phase, so using Mirror Buster in the stage runs the risk of you being unable to defeat the boss, and if that happens, you must game over and restart the entire 6-8 to eight minute long stage, provided you push the correct button on the game over screen. But should you defeat the Wily Machine with Mirror Buster, the guy begs for mercy, you blow up his station, and hijack a random space shuttle that Wily just happened to have lying around. In the end, I've come up with 7 pros and 18 cons, and I'm sure most of you saw the negative score coming a mile away, as many complain about the frustrating level design being a huge turnoff. Even when I first played this game, I hated it! However, I don't think it's as bad as what I first thought. Not that it's good either, but after playing the game so much for this review, it really doesn't offer anything else besides that initial unfriendly difficulty. Most of the new content just gets brushed aside in less than a minute, and returning content is downplayed without any compensation. So with that, I'm going to give Mega Man Dr. Wily's Revenge a rating of 3 out of 10. Lacking. Oh, thank goodness, the curse is over. And that's the end of this review. If you like what you saw, please give a like and subscribe to my channel. If you're not up to date on my other Mega Man videos, I'll have them in the description for you. Also, please consider joining my Discord server, Demon Trappaland, also in the description. We host fun Mega Man events like racing, or just talking about the games we like and dislike. Next up, I'll be heading back to the NES for Mega Man 3 and finishing up the three winners of the poll. With that said, I'll be signing off. Take care, folks.